The steel and ceramics industries, um, and also those you know, glass, all the things, the infrastructure things we need to make life happen in the modern 21st century. Uh, they use gas-fired furnaces uh, with temperatures that go up to excess of uh, 1,000 degrees Celsius. Well, there's that big emphasis now in it. How can we cut our carbon emissions? And for a sector like that, it's rock hard. So the Teesside-based Minerals Processing Institute, they're taking part in a project looking into improving energy efficiency and how we can get to that target that's been mooted around by 2035, we should be carbon neutral. This morning, I had a really fascinating conversation with Chris McDonald. He's their chief executive. Have a listen to this. It's a really big challenge. Um, so when, when we're talking about, you know, the sector here, we call it the foundation industries. It's like steel, metals, glass, ceramics, all, all the sort of stuff that everything's made from. And all of these materials, they use these really high temperature furnaces, loads of energy uh, to, to make the materials. And so they're the, they're the most difficult to, uh, to, to remove the carbon from and they're also the most polluting as well in, in terms of carbon dioxide emissions so it's a big problem globally to try and come up with some new technologies to enable these industries to decarbonize is this something that has been on the horizon for a long time for those industries where they knew this was creeping up and 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 this is not a new thing that you're going after encounter well, it has, you know, because I've been working in the steel industry for about 20 years now. And, and even in 2001, I remember there was a big European project uh, trying to look at re removing carbon emissions. But the, the thing is, the, the ambitions changed. So back then, 20 years ago, we thought if we could reduce carbon emissions by 10% by 2050, then that was, that was going to be really great if we could do that. And now we're saying we're going to be zero carbon by 2030 or 2035. So really, the pace of change is what's, is what's increased. So we need to come up with all sorts of new ideas for new technologies. Is it a head scratcher for you? Because is it the industry that you've spoken about are necessities, really, because without the things that you've just spoken about, we wouldn't have much of infrastructure for today. So what? how likely is it by 2035 you would be carbon neutral? Yep, so you're right. We can't do without it. I mean, you know, you can't do without steel and cement and, and glass and all of these things. Um, and it is a head scratcher because in most other industries, like, say, automotive, you can kind of get around it by just switching to electricity. And then as long as you've got green electricity, you can run your motors and your, your, your lines and so on. But for these big furnaces that we operate, electricity just isn't an option. And it's not an option because they're so massive. They generally run on gas. Uh, and also because there's a, this sort of affects the quality as well. So you can imagine if you have a brick kiln and um, and they're not heated correctly and you build a house and the bricks all crack, you know, that's a massive problem. So it's, it's an issue of the scale of the industry, but also, you know, you need to have a sort of quality and surety of these materials as well. I'm, I'm sure that a, a lot of this is down to investment as well into that technology. Are governments giving you that investment to, to look at this and so you can create that future that they're demanding from you? Yeah, well, the investment that's required in this is too big for the industry itself. I mean, I've just come off talking to you from a, a conference I've been doing uh, in Korea where there's sort of, you know, 800 people from the global steel industry is kind of wrestling with this issue of investment. Uh, fortunately, the UK government has given uh, the Materials Processing Institute £20 million pounds over the next five years to work on these problems for the UK industry, which is which is fantastic, recognising we've got a real centre of excellence in Teesside to work on this. But, but industry needs to invest alongside that. So, so we'll we're looking for much funding with industry. But if you look globally, governments around the world are putting tens of millions, hundreds of millions of pounds into solving these problems because they know these industries are so vital for their own economy. We, we all have an interest in this because it affects us all. You know, the materials that you produce as an industry, you know, we use, but also we, we all fancy that idea, don't we? We like the idea of being carbon neutral by 2035. Do we, do we all have to work in this together and think that we may have to just, you know, chip a few quid in ourselves to, to get to where we need to be? Yeah, we do. Because, I mean, there's a big challenge to this. That Look, the, the outcome of this is likely to be more expensive materials. I mean, we've looked at some scenarios where if we switch to hydrogen, which is like the real buzzword at the moment, mm. instead of using 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 oil, it, it, we could see prices of steel go up by, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, and the challenge is, you know, if we switch our own industry to this, but we don't put some protection measures in place, then we could be importing dirty, cheap materials from other countries. So, you know, it's, it, it's something that as a society, we have. To, if we're going to want it and we want our industry to do it, then, yeah, we'll have to accept that then just buying sort of cheap, dirty stuff from overseas is not going to work either. And, and that's the key, isn't it? Because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. We can do what yeah. we do. We can recycle our, you know, McDonald's cups and we can do our plastic into our bin, but, you know, our steel might be coming from somewhere where it's not so clean. We, we need to open our eyes wider to this. And, and I'll put to you, because the thing is, you know, we, we talk about these insurmountable 
insurmountable things. You know, if I was to say to you 20 years ago that there would be days where none of our electric was produced by coal, you would have laughed at me. Yeah, you're right. But, you know, that's another one of these out of sight, out of mind things. We're currently importing now about sort of 20 to 30 percent of our electricity via interconnectors underneath the North Sea. And we don't really know where a lot of that electricity comes from. Um, so, again, you know, we have to be clear about this in the UK. If, if we're going to decarbonise, that doesn't mean offshoring. It doesn't mean importing electricity or steel or whatever from someone else. If we're going to decarbonise, we need to do it properly. And that means that we uh, will produce clean electricity, clean materials. And if that's a little bit more expensive uh, and it's a difficult to think, think to say at the moment given energy prices um, then then it's it's something that we'll have we'll have to deal with because there's, there's that thing isn't there with carbon credits you know the where it, it's like a game of poker we move it around and do, do you think the general public like my bit self I, I i'm i was interested to speak to you today because you clarify things for me and make it really easy for me um that we we understand what it what what is meant by carbon neutral by 2035 well, do you know, I, I wonder if anyone really understands it because it, it is quite complicated, isn't it? And, and it's important to have an ambition like that. But I don't think anyone really wants to see a fall in their quality of life either. And that's, that's where the innovation bit needs to come in. So we've got to solve the problems whilst at the same time maintaining the same quality of life for people. So, one of the, for instance, one of the things we've been working on is improving energy efficiency for some of these big furnaces. And, and it all sounds very complicated. I've got my engineers talking to me about organic ranking cycles. But, but essentially, it's just like the fridge you've got in your house. You know, if you've got a fridge in your house, it keeps the, keeps the, keeps the food cool because it sucks the, sucks the heat out. If we can do that on big furnaces, then we can, um, we can increase their energy efficiency. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we can do that in, in domestic as well. So um, looking at energy efficiency is a great thing to do and switching to alternative fuels as well. We are at a real crux of, in history a year, aren't we? And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of anything more fundamental than maybe it's the Industrial Revolution. We're, we're at one of those points in time. Um, we're living in a strange time. Yeah, you're right. It's a complete turning point. I mean, our whole society has been built on coal, essentially. You know, the Industrial Revolution was coal and it was oil. Um, and, the, you know, the, you look at, you know, the UK, a massive exporter of, of energy for most of our history, and, and now we're a big importer as well. And, and we're seeing the impact of that now, aren't we? You know, with energy mm -hmm. prices going, going through the roof. I was thinking I should get my team at work to come and have a look at my central heating system and see if it could save me some money here. But, <laughs> it's um, you know, I think we all need that. But, but um, it, we, we've been buffered at around by these by these challenges and i think you know we, we we've got to realize you're absolutely spot on it's a fundamental change um in in how our whole economy works uh, but we've got to keep focused on it because if we let go of industries like energy or materials and so on then then really you know we'll, we'll lose control of the whole economy then and what history does tell us that people like you and your teams are always up for the challenge and will always strive to find a solution yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the people, you know, who I work with, they get out of bed every day to solve these problems. You know, that's their job. All they need are the tools to do it. And that means we need to invest in research and innovation. That's the way out of this. It's about getting our great, you know, innovators, many of them in industry, not just in, in universities, but in industry as well, industrial innovators, get them out, you know, unleash them, give them the tools to get on, develop these technologies and, and, and get them out and solve these problems. And we are centred to that in, in, in the North East, aren't we? We've got so much happening here that that can help the rest of the world. It, it, it is like going back to the Industrial Revolution again. We can help to build the world. Yeah, we, we really can. And, you know, I think we saw some of this reliance recently when, um, you know, the energy prices went up, CF fertilisers, uh, you know, the north of the Tees there, they weren't able to produce, and then we find we can't get sliced chicken in the supermarket, you know. And it's, it's all of these things where, you know, sort of unsung heroes of industry are coming into kind of Billingham and Wilton and, and so on every single day and, and doing their job. And it's only when they're not there that you notice that there's a problem. So, yeah, we've got the, we've got the capability to solve these problems. And, and you're right, the Teesside and actually the wider North East, is, we're going to be a big part of this. Yeah, not all superheroes wear capes, as they say, Chris. Yeah, and uh, right, yeah. Don your cape for work today, my friend. And it's always a great <laughs> to speak to you. Take care. Yeah, you too as well. See you, Chris. Bye-bye. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. A real interesting insight, isn't it? And I think, you know, what does it mean, carbon neutral? And I think Chris could put a bit of context into that and what we're doing in our neck of the woods to try to solve the world's problems. Uh, Chris McDonald, Chief Executive of Teesside-based Minerals Processing Institute there, just giving us a bit of an insight.